Welcome to Spark Creators, a podcast that empowers kids to learn, create, and become. This podcast invites creators and entrepreneurs from all over to share their stories and ideas. We believe every kid is creative. It's just a matter of taking that first step and starting now. We hope this podcast can inspire you to create something that makes a difference in the world. If you want to stay inspired, remember to subscribe. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Or visit us at peachandplumlab.com slash podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Spark Creators. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Thanks again for tuning in to Spark Creators. This is a special time again since we stay so much at home. Today, I wanted to share with you guys something maybe you guys can do at home. The topic is called Four Critical Skills Parents Can Help Their Kids to Foster While Staying at Home. So, a lot of kids are staying home or having online classes, and many parents are working from home as well. So, there will be a lot of family time together with kids if you are parents. This is an episode introducing the next coming series. And this whole series is about some critical skills parents can help their kids to foster at a younger age. I hope this episode will be very useful for you. Uh, either as an inspiration or a resource to check out some of the links, books, or people that I will be mentioning. All right, if you don't want to take any notes, but you still wanted to find out all the links and things I mentioned in this episode, please go to peachandplumblab.com forward slash 51, and you will find everything there. Again, it is peachandplumblab.com forward slash 51. So what are some of the best skills um, that I wish I learned when I was young? Just remember, since I am actually a first generation college student, my parents didn't actually go to college. So they were not able to introduce some of the concept early on, some of the concept we will be mentioning here early on in my life. And I know it is a different story for you guys. And that's why I wish you guys as a parent um, can bring this concept to your kids early on. So the critical skills that I mentioned here will be storytelling, design thinking, critical thinking, and leadership skills. A lot of them are soft skills that won't be able to be learned like immediately. It takes practice and also repetition um, in order to make that part of your kid's natural ability. But because they are some like kind of thinking habits or problem solving skills once kids know how to use them it becomes really natural and that will accompany them for the rest of their life so now let's talk about each of this one of those skills and how you as parents can potentially help cultivate the skills within your kids at the same time, I will also introduce who will be invited as guest for this whole series. The first thing, storytelling. This is a skill basically to be able to tell good stories. But how could parents help their kids foster good storytelling skills? And there are three points I wanted to make. First is always listen attentively in order to encourage kids to tell more of their own story and feel empowered to share whatever opinion they have um, as parents we have to give them full attention when kids speak it seems easy but you know as parents we have so much going on and um, so much like such a long to-do list in our mind and we just have our phones with us all the time. And it can be really, really hard sometimes to spend just the time listening to our kids. I mean, with our full attention, right? That means we are not rushed in some way and we are engaged with the thinking uh, with our kids and we will not judge them with any opinions we have ahead of time. Just remember, giving kids full attention can be a huge encouragement 
for them to tell good stories. All right, the second thing、um, to cultivate better storytelling skill is to encourage bold imagination. Indeed, you know, as we grown up as a as an adult,、um, it can be really hard for us to get to the same level of imagination as we used to have when we were a child. So the same thing happen when our kids tell story. It can be filled up with all kinds of imagination, or even sometimes nonsense. But even if that's the case, what should we do as parents? If we are not careful, it's very easy for us to either correct our kids' ideas, or if it doesn't make sense,、um, we will lose our attention completely. And we just have to remember that kids sometimes have their own worlds going on. So in order to Help them to tell better stories. We need to encourage them to think boldly, and we also sometimes maybe need to enter their worlds and to be part of it. That's why it's really, really important to to important to encourage them to think boldly and sometimes even engage with them. So that also brings us our third point is to tell stories together as a family. It is very powerful to tell stories together as a family. Kids love spending time with their parents, and as parents, we should definitely try to make storytelling part of the family tradition or activity. The beauty of a good story is that sometimes it can purely just based on imagination,、um, even without image or animation or books. We can all think of our own version of a character. Or personality, so to make it even more fun, we can add some like performing elements in the story. For example, so when each person tells a story, the action can draw a lot more imagination out of the story, and the person's personality can also add a lot to the story. As a family, you can do some kind of story relay. When where one person tells a part of the story and the other person keeps telling the same story, but from a completely different perspective, it can be so much fun if you create one story together as a family, and it becomes part of your lovely memories in the future. I'm sure the kids will remember them even years after. With that being said,、uh, how to improve the storytelling skills? And here I also have some books I wanted to tell parents. Uh, that you can check out, and these books are either written by the guest we invited to the series or recommended by them. And again, as I said, you don't have to take notes. Simply go to peachandplumlab dot com forward slash fifty one, and you'll find all the links. It's available for you. All right. So the first book is called "You Don't Know Jack: A Storyteller Goes to School." And another book is called "Playing with Stories: Story Crafting for Storytellers, Writers, Teachers, and Other Imaginative Thinkers." And the third book I recommend here is called "Effective Storytelling Step by Step: Captive, Engage, and Influence Your Audience." It's the 2020 edition. The fourth、uh, storytelling book that I want to recommend is "The Storytelling Animal." How stories make us human. All right. After these books recommendation, next I wanted to talk about who is gonna come talk to us about storytelling. Our guest for storytelling is Kevin Cody. He is an American teacher, storyteller, and author. He has told stories all over forty states and also internationally. He holds a doctorate degree from the Ohio State University in education storytelling and story making, and he has taught storytelling at the university and also secondary level. Kevin shares stories with a highly energetic, animated, and interactive style, and is considered by many storytelling professionals as one of the most influential and dynamic storyteller and teachers today. Cody also wrote the book "Playing with Stories: Story Crafting for Storytellers, Writers, Teachers, and Other Imaginative Thinkers," and that was the first book that we recommend. And he is also considered one of the nation's primary advocates for youth storytelling. 
According to the Nation Storytelling Network, he is the first full-time high school、um, storytelling teacher in the country. His work has been chronicled in the book he co-authored with Judy Sima, "Raising Voices: Creating Youth Storytelling Groups and Troops." Cody also started the Youth Special Interest Group for the National Storytelling Network and founded the Voice Across America Youth Storytelling Project. So there will be two episodes coming up. Um, episodes fifty two and episode fifty three, both will be the storytelling episodes. And he also sent us some stories that he wrote and he told in in a really beautiful format. And we will be introducing that on his episodes. So please stay tuned for that. All right, the next. Skill that I wanted to introduce you guys is called design thinking, and this is something that I actually have been familiar with for years. And for this episode, we have an expert who will be coming in talking about this. But how can parents help their kids、uh, to develop their design thinking skills? And here I also have three tips that I wanted to share with you. All right, the first thing is. Be empathetic. So empathy is one of the most important skills probably a designer or design thinking can have when it comes to solve problems, either、um, for yourself or solve problems for others. But in order to solve a problem, it requires us to stand from another person's perspective and think or feel from that person's shoes. Right, so a lot of times kids are actually very natural when it comes to like standing from another person's perspective. They have empathy or compassion toward others, and that is a very powerful mindset to have when they wanted to solve any problem. Okay, so as parents, we can also intentionally ask questions like, "What do you think they would feel in that situation?" Or what would you think if you are in their shoes? Something like that. Those questions can help cultivate the type of thinking、um, we wanted for our kids, right? To be empathetic. So that's、uh, the first point about being empathetic. Another point I wanted to make for design thinking is to embrace brainstorming as a family, and this is something that you can do as a family to help your kids to cultivate design thinking skills. So, in order to do that, there are some some rules I wanted to introduce you later. But no matter what kind of problems you guys are trying to solve, either very small problems at home, you know, or bigger like world issues, there are a lot of possibilities you can use brainstorming as a way to come up with new ideas or solution. Okay. So your kid is actually born with a creative mind, so try to encourage them to come up with very bold ideas during the、uh, brainstorming session. You can also build upon each other's idea as a family, because collaboration on ideas can spark new possibilities. Just remember, the process of the brainstorming session has actually several rules that you can follow. And this is suggested by a creative agency called Ideal, and you can try to take a take a look of those rules and try to stick to them、um, in order to make the brainstorming session as efficient or useful as possible. And these rules are number one: defer judgment. Don't judge anyone's idea. So don't think that's a bad idea or you know or the worst idea. Just never say anything because any ideas are open. Number two is to encourage wild ideas. So no matter how crazy how wild the idea is, and they should be encouraged. Number three is to build on the ideas of others. So imagine something on top of another's idea is totally okay. Number four, stay focused on the topic. Just make sure that you are not off the path when you brainstorm one thing and then start thinking about another thing. Number five, one conversation at a time. Number six, be visual. If you can draw, doodle, or just whatever you can do on the post-it notes, and 
yeah, you can do that, and it will be better than just writing the text. But of course, writing text is very important too. Number seven is go for quantity. It never says it's quality. So quantity is more important than quality when you do brainstorming because later you can spend some time narrow down your idea, which can focus on quantity. So. Um, that brings our next point, actually, that I wanted to make. How can parents、um, help foster design thinking in their kids? Is that you need always keep improving on your ideas or prototypes or whatever you do. So whatever thing you are working on as a family, just remember that design thinking is never a one-time deal. Even if you make some, like say DIY soap bottles. And you can apply design thinking into your process. Of course,、uh, that's even the case if you're creating a product or a business that intend to serve other people.、Uh, very important component in design thinking is called、uh, iteration, right? That means that you guys, as a family, you will keep. Improving the idea or the things that you make. So whenever you have a new idea or you hear some great feedback, you can apply、uh, iteration to the things that you make. You can keep changing it, keep improving it. There's a reason why Apple comes up with a new iPhone model every year, right? Because they're trying to solve the problem people used to have and coming up with new features that people would want in the future. They dive into the deep need、um, of customers and trying to figure out some of their pain points and improve the current technology and also overall user experience. So, if you wanted to practice design thinking as a family, just remember always try to improve your current situation or product. All right. Now, after that, three tips. I wanted to introduce you guys some books related to design thinking. Again, you don't have to remember all these. Simply go to the link peachandplumlab dot com forward slash fifty one, and you will find all the links for the book. And you can just click, go to Amazon and buy them. All right. So the first book I wanted to introduce you is called Journey to City X. The whole title is actually called Journey to City X: Adventures in Engineering for Kids. And this is written by our guest. We will be inviting who will be sharing about design thinking and problem solving in this series. Um, his name is Brad Shirky, and I'm gonna introduce him a little later. His book is has not launched yet, and it is planning to launch in May. And actually, I have pre-ordered one, and I really look forward to that.、Uh, the second book that I wanted to introduce you is called Launch: Use Design Thinking to Boost Creativity and Bring Out the Maker in Every Student. The third book is called. The Design Thinking Quick Start Guide: A Six-Step Process for Generating and Implementing Creative Solutions. The fourth book that I want to recommend is called The Design Thinking Playbook: Mindful Digital Transformation of Teams, Products, Services, Businesses, and Ecosystems. Okay, so as I said,、uh, for this series, our guest is Brett Shirky. He is an author, speaker, and an educator. He is also a faculty at Singular University. So, as a co-creator of City X Project, their project actually has been adopted by a lot of educators or organizations around the globe, more than seventy-five、uh, countries. So, it's actually very impactful in the、uh, design thinking and also educational world. And、uh, Brett has also done a lot of other like nonprofit related initiative or efforts. He is also、um, a co-founder for Ideaco. It's called I D E A C O. And if you wanted to check that out, is I D A C O dot org. So Ideaco is basically a coalition for innovative development, education, and action. Uh, it is a nonprofit that has a mission to build and empower communities of change makers through experiential learning. And he is also a co-founder of Applington Co-working. He is a co-builder of Anti Mondays Global Dinner Series. 
And all these are actually nonprofit initiatives that has a huge impact globally. And if you guys wanted to check out, again, go to the link peachandplumlab.com forward slash 51 and I will link all the possible things that Brett has done in this episode as well. All right, so what is the third skill that parents can help their kids to um, foster while staying home? The third one is critical thinking. To be honest, before I conduct the interview with our guest, Dr. Brian Barnes, on critical thinking, I have always thought critical thinking is about being skeptical about certain concepts or behavior. It is part of critical thinking, to be honest, but being a critical thinking means way more than that. So the following are some of the takeaways I had after talking to Dr. Brian Bonds, and I also ho- hope this can help you as a parent to educate your own child and to help them cultivate critical thinking skills in their life. So the very first thing in order to cultivate critical thinking is to be very aware of our own thinking. One interesting definition Dr. Brian Barnes gives to critical thinking is called think about your own thinking while you're thinking to improve your thinking. And the essence about that is to be aware of your own thoughts and your thinking process. That means we are not just simply expressing our thinking as words or as pictures, whatever. And we have to think about our own thoughts while we are thinking about it. So a lot of kids, especially in the early age, probably experience a hard time, a difficult time to accept that because not everyone thinks the same as they do. Some kids even think that their way is the only way, right? So as parents, you may want to explain this to your kid by being a good role model. Like whenever you're thinking about something, you can say it in a way that you are open for changes and Or something like you are aware that your thinking is not perfect and you can improve it later. You are a critic of your own thinking, basically. So when your child see that, you see you as a parent doing that, he or she may pick it up as a habit of thinking when they look up to you, right? So when they see you doing enough times and maybe they can pick that up on their own. So uh, the second thing as a parent you can help is to ask your kids to be humble and adaptable. So a very interesting aspect, Dr. Brian Barnes, he mentioned eight valuable intellectual traits of a good critical thinker. The most memorable one that stick out actually uh, in my mind is called intellectual humility, basically being humble and adaptable. It is very important to be aware of the limitation of our own knowledge. So as adults, we may have this kind of conscious when we read more or when we expose ourselves to a bigger world and when we experience uh, more overall. But how would you teach this to your kids, right? One important thing is to ensure a very safe and secure environment for your kids to make mistakes and sometimes admit they are wrong or admit their weaknesses. They shouldn't feel uh, they are judged or it's difficult to claim that they did something wrong or they are not right. Just because they wanted to impress you as parents or just leave a good impression for other people. So basically start accepting your child's flaw and allow them to be true to themselves. From there, I think teaching them to be humble and adaptable gets easier. By the way, if you are curious, here I also have the list of eight valuable intellectual traits I'm going to read you from the Critical Thinking Foundation. And this will be linked in our episode as well. So the eight traits are intellectual humility, intellectual courage, intellectual empathy, intellectual autonomy, intellectual integrity, intellectual perseverance, confidence in reason, and the last one is fair-mindedness. All right, the third suggestion for you to help your kids to cultivate critical thinking is to practice. 
Practice makes perfect. Again, critical thinking is also a type of skill that requires a long time to develop. It's very similar to other type of skills that practicing or repetition actually makes it very、uh, make you better to have this ability. So it will become more natural when you practice a lot. Just remember that thinking exists everywhere, and it's not just directly related to schoolwork or some other kind of science、um, work that kids do from a certain for a certain project. They can be doing anything and still practice critical thinking. As a family, you can be like outside hiking or you're chatting. Together, or you're doing some house tours together,、uh, or you're reading together on the weekends. Anywhere could be a place to practice critical thinking. Just、um, as long as you remember to be very aware of your own thinking and keep improving your thinking. Right. All right. So that comes down to、uh, the books that I want to recommend you guys to read about critical thinking. The first book I wanted to recommend is called *The Miniature Guide to Critical Thinking: The Concepts and Tools*, and the second book is called *Why People Think About Weird Things*. The third book I wanted to recommend is called *Critical Thinking: What Every Person Needs to Survive、um, in the Rapidly Changing World*. And for this topic, we have invited our guest, Dr. Brian Barnes, and I've mentioned it, mentioned him several times already. Dr. Brian Barnes, he holds a PhD degree in interdisciplinary humanities and an MA in philosophy from the University of Louisville. Dr. Barnes is a veteran of the U.S. Army, along with other non-academic careers, and currently he teaches face-to-face -face and online classes at several different universities in traditional philosophy topics, along with course in sustainability. Critical thinking and Japanese sword practice. He has co-authored articles examining critical thinking strategies and tactics for the National Teaching and Learning Forum, and he is also an author of the textbook *The Centric Question: Critical Im Engagement with Business Ethics*. Dr. Barnes co-hosts a weekly radio show called *Critical Thinking for Everyone*, and they host on. One hundred six point five forward radio in Louisville, and he also created the critical thinking comic book series called Ventures in Critical Thinking. Dr. Barnes is a scholar of the Foundation of Critical Thinking and was a direct student of Dr. Richard Paul. All right, so the last skill that. As a parent, you can help your kids to foster is leadership skills. So here I have three tips for you and how you can help your kids to achieve that. First is to know yourself well, be true to yourself, and in other words, it's called be authentic. And how can you ask or help your kids to be authentic? It's very easy for many people to think that being a leader is about higher management on people or different projects. It's partially true, but one of the most important thing many of us ignore is called authenticity, and this has been the word Karen Hurt, the guest we will be inviting for、uh, the talk to on the series. And she kept mentioning or emphasizing authenticity during this whole interview on leadership skills. So, what does it mean to be authentic? Why is it so important for a leader? I can only say from my own perspective that many leaders may perceive themselves very differently when they are at a higher position versus when they are not. So, they may wear a mask. To try to be perfect,、um, try to be a perfect person they wanted to be, they intend to be, without realizing that's not really themselves. So authenticity requires a leader really to know themselves or、uh, know themselves very well and always stand true to themselves. Anyone can be a leader, and the only way to distinguish yourself is to be yourself. A leader can be introvert. 
or even afraid of public speaking, as long as they are aware of that and they are ready to improve and learn、uh, from the process. So when we teach our kids, it's very important to let them know that sometimes being a true self、um, can help a lot. So being a true self can help develop their leadership skills because that is the very first step. Of how you manage people or project, right? Manage yourself, manage your true self. So try some new ways you can help your child to recognize their personality, strength, and weakness together as a family. So allow your kids sometimes to state confidently what kind of person they are and why they accept who they are and love themselves. So that's the first thing: accept themselves. And be true to yourself. Yeah, be authentic. The second thing、uh, I wanted to mention here, how car- how parent can help their kids to be a leader is to help others to succeed. This is another kind of potential misleading understanding about leadership is to have power and authority. It may make some people feel great because they can make big decisions, and others cannot if they are not, you know, the leader or at that high level. But it also means a lot more responsibilities when you make bigger decisions. In reality, true leadership is about serving others and allow others to succeed. So a real leader doesn't necessarily have to be good at doing everything. He or she can. Delegate. They can delegate important tasks to other people they trust. So, as a leader, the person can allow another person to be more skillful in a certain field or be more successful than themselves. So, how do you think you can help your kids develop this kind of mindset, helping others to succeed? Well, maybe you can start by serving or volunteering as a family. You can try different ways how you can contribute to families, friends, or even homeless dogs or、um, homeless people. Just anyone in need. Let your kids describe how it really feels after helping them,、uh, helping other people. And whenever there's a problem that you or your kids can help solve together, encourage them to reach out to other people and ask for help. So helping other people to succeed can also help your kids to、uh, develop their leadership skills. So the last thing I wanted to mention about leadership skills for kids is to ask them to be assertive and willing to speak up. As a leader, one has to be very assertive and willing to speak up whenever、um, needed. In contrast, as a follower, one may always listen to what others say and sometimes get impacted easily by other people's opinion. This is even more important, especially when you are at a lower position situation where you don't actually see. The need to speak up, or you don't have the power to speak up. But leadership skills is not something that you practice when you become a leader. It actually should be a skill or something that serves you, even as someone who are doing kind of low jobs, right? Like underdogs, yeah. So it should serve you as someone who have the leadership traits, no matter what kind of position you are at right now. So, as parents, how can we encourage our kids to be assertive and express their true feelings when things are not right? So, first, maybe it's important for kids to recognize their own feelings and describe it. As a family, can you guys learn together what kind of emotion you have and how to express it? And then, whenever your kids feel angry or upset, ask them to describe their feelings calmly. And so that not they are not super mad, or maybe you can talk about that later when they get over that phase of emotion. And after that, ask them to propose a solution that can help the current situation and that can make them feel better, right? So they can they have to speak up and how to improve their current situation. And when you practice this enough at home, your kids will be starting to demonstrate that skill to people outside of the house. 
with more and more experience talking to different people in different situations, learning about their need, their emotion, and I'm sure your kid、uh, will also be a very assertive leader、um, that you dream them to be when they practice more and more. All right, so those are the three tips I wanted to give、uh, when it comes to. Uh, raising kids or cultivating kids' leadership skills, and now I wanted to introduce you guys a bunch of books in this leadership topic. The first book is called Courageous Cultures: How to Build Teams of Micro Innovators, Problem Solvers, and Customer Advocates. And the second book is called Winning Well: A Manager's Guide to Getting Results Without Losing Your Soul. Both books are written by our guest Karen Hurt, and she will be talking about leadership skills on our podcast in the same series. The last book I wanted to recommend is called Leadership for Kids. It was written by Cecilia Boswell, Mary Christopher, and JJ Colburn. All right, those are the book recommendations. And if you wanted to get the details, as I told you, you can go to peachandplumlab dot com forward slash fifty one, and you can get all the books and links that's necessary for this episode. The last part I wanted to introduce, of course, is Karen Hurt, who will be the guest for the episodes called Leadership Skills for Kids, and she actually came to our show with her son. And we will be interviewing them together. So Karen Hurt, she built、uh, Let's Grow Leaders with her husband David Dai, and they help leaders basically to achieve breakthrough results without losing their soul. They are keynote、uh, leadership speakers, trainers, and award-winning authors. So Karen is a top leader consultant and CEO of Let's Grow Leaders. She was a former Verizon Wireless executive. She was named to Inc. Magazine's list of great leadership speakers. So she came with her son Sebastian Hurt. He、um, is the co-author of Glowstone Peak. Which is a children's picture book about courage, influence, and hope. So during the interview, we will be talking a lot about leadership skills at the same time how they publish the book together. All right, everyone, that's it for this episode. I know it has a lot of information that's going on, but I hope all these are useful informations for you, including the tips. And also books and introduction for our next series, and I hope you guys look forward for the next series of guests. And、um, I learned personally; I learned a lot from these guests, and I hope it can be an eye-opening experience for you guys as well. Again, I am Lee Zen, your host. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning into Spark Creators, a podcast that empowers kids to learn, create, and become. Thank you, everyone. I will see you guys next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Spark Creators podcast at peachandplumlab dot com.